hi, I'm watching this documentary called Holy Hell about cults, and I can really understand why somebody would join a cult. I myself was very much um, attracted to cult-like, but not exactly cults. Places that made you feel like you're part of something that is bigger than you. But with me, I clearly didn't want to lose the boundaries. I clearly would not be in a place where people touched each other and followed uh, a person. And guru, actually, the word guru means to take someone from darkness to light, as far as I understood. And namaste means to see the holy within you. In order to do that, I think it's really important still to maintain self-respect. And the lack of boundaries for me is the lack of respect. Because once my boundaries are broken, I don't think it does make you, it does not break the ego. The opposite, it gives somebody else the possibility of getting to you and possibly harming you, which is why I always sought more conservative places. And even the yoga center that I was seeking, um, though there was a little scandal recently, Shivananda Yoga really, there was a lot of boundaries that were kept. I didn't feel that anybody was touching me or wanting me to touch them. And there was also a separation between men and women. Um, and there was a certain rules about modesty that I, I thought were important for me in order to keep my boundaries. Because I was always, I understand the stories of people that join cults was very similar to my story. So I did come from places that are very strict and rigid, like Catholic or ultra-Orthodox Jewish families or whatever, very conservative families. We come from families that don't have any boundaries. So those two extremes create people that really seek something that can balance it. But oftentimes the cults are just illusions because they give you a feeling this is your family, but it's just a place where people can harm you and control you. I wouldn't let anybody be the center of my life, although although I do believe at one point I thought it's better to be with a group of people than to be in a relationship with one person who seems to be like a girl because that's the kind of relationships I had where the person would be like very central, very focused and then uh, would not really be nice to me and would just take advantage of me. So I prefer to be with groups. I felt safer. Other people first. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> we were together 24-7. We lived together. We ate. So sometimes the cults are places we can escape loneliness and solitude, which is... Being alone is really difficult. But if you think about it, if you think about the Buddhist writers, their writings, the ancient writings, you see that solitude and coming to coming to grip with yourself spending time with yourself and i mean the ancient greeks said know thyself being alone with yourself is really important but of course it should be somehow balanced but sometimes it's not and if if the option is rather than to be with yourself to be 24 hours with people that's not good. Play together. You just forget who you are, and then people can take advantage of you even more because your boundaries are being stepped over if you cannot spend time by yourself. Everybody that I knew was in the Buddha field. My circle, my family was the Buddha field. Oftentimes, if we have dysfunctional families, we seek other things. I lived in a house with about eight people. It was warm and safe. Nobody ever went hungry. Nobody was ever going to be homeless. You always had a place. Yeah. Everyone was supporting each other with helping with food, helping with cooking. You know, it was it was so idyllic. I didn't drink caffeine. I didn't drink a glass of wine. I mean, I can't imagine living any cleaner. It was really advocated that we exercise and take care of ourselves. This was a lifestyle. This is exactly what I think. We paid our own rent. We had jobs. I did personal training, I owned my own business, I was very successful with money. If I had a job, obviously my money went toward my rent, my groceries, 
but whatever needed to be bought or built, we all pitched in and paid for it. This is a commune. And the kibbutz, it's very much like the kibbutz in Israel. It's just for others, for God. I love service. I calculated and I did service 40 hours a week plus work. The problem with God? service for a couple of quadriplegics that were involved in the group and helping them through their day. It made me feel like, like I had purpose. I think that is wonderful to help others, but not when a human being controls you. You know, when there's, when there's admiration for a figure, whether it's Jesus, whether it's a rabbi, whether it's any religious figure, just seems to me dangerous. To dedicate your life to serve the knowing and your spiritual master's work on this earth. I don't know, I just... Maybe it's just because I come from a very small group of people called the Jews. I just always feel like I don't really want to be, like Groucho Marx said, I don't want to belong to a club where they would accept me. And that's that kept playing in my mind every time I was in the yoga center. I was so happy to be there, not to have any worries about eating by myself, cooking by myself. Um, it was just nice to be with other people we seem to have the same purpose. But the problem was, I always felt, as a Jew, that I did not share those purposes ultimately because I was not German, I was not French, I was not any of the nationalities or cultures or religions. And I felt still identified with my culture and my religion. And I think if you erase your religion or your culture or your ethnic identity or where you come from, it's sort of like erasing yourself. It's like draw a figure and you try to erase with an eraser. Oh, let's just erase this part of me. And you end up erasing yourself at the end, ultimately. And that's what these cults kind of want you to erase yourself and dedicate yourself to them. And that way they can take advantage of you uh, financially and every other way for service. That's why I was also, my luck, this, this side, this individualistic side of me always prevented me from being um, admired or being popular in school. I wasn't popular in school for the same reason. I never felt that the collective was more important than me. Also in yoga groups or religious groups, I never thought that the collective is more important than me. I felt that I'm an individual ultimately and that I felt the groups would ultimately harm me. I felt threatened by them. Maybe it's because I was not very really happy with that side of school. I enjoyed learning in school, but I enjoyed being with teachers. I didn't enjoy being with the pupils. And that kept me away from ever joining groups, whether it's kibbutz, whether it's a yoga center, whether it's any cults. Um, it's this 